This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. And so if you've ever been to, around the faculty at Morehouse or Howard or some of these HBCUs, these women, their husbands, they have open marriages with arrangements where the husband's probably got a bunch of frat buddies as his real wives. And she, um, she gets money and she's basically paid to not tell people her husband's gay. Mm-hmm. A lot of sisters don't mind that as long as they got diamonds and furs. Because they love things more than they love the man or his children. A lot of, a lot of greedy, materialistic, cynical mm. sisters out here. I'm not saying all, but many. And so if you're a good brother, you know, why don't, you know, why don't you get a job at the CIA? If you, <laughs> <laughs> how is he going to do that? And these just that when they want what they want, they don't give a damn about what he has to do. It's the same way a lot of sisters can go out with a drug dealer. They'll say, I'm a, I love Jesus. I'm a good Christian. And your man is a drug dealer. He's nice to me. And he's fucking killed the whole community, you stupid bitch. Mm. But he's got nice clothes on. She's got a fur. She's got a car. She has a nice house. We have a lot of narcissism in American women in general and black women used to used to have some value for black men being led. This has been lost by a huge swathe of black women. Have you been in the local store lately, Walgreens, the CVS, and the sisters angry that the black man's in the store? Well, and what are you buying Kotex for? And <laughs> maybe he's getting it for his wife. <laughs> mm. I mean, there's always something that you did wrong. Come on. Have you ever worked? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Her? And you're like, oh, my God, why are you always attacking and offending and going out of the way? You know, they never do it to white men because white men are dog a sister out. White men come down on black women. That's why sisters don't like Trump. <laughs> Trump. Trump's the kind of dude that would fire sisters, like cut them off. They sense that. They sense, even though he's a jackass in a whole lot of ways, they sense the possibility of being accountable. Sisters have been free agents. They've always been able to be with white men, even if it wasn't consensual. Mm-hmm. Uh, black men have only been able to be with white women over the last, say, uh, what, 51 years. Mm. I mean, this black women could always be with white men. Always. Mm. And the little bit of catch up that black men have done has made black women so angry, but yet there's never been a point where 30% of the new black marriages among black men were with white women. It's still about, say, 8 to 10%. Meaning that most black men are less likely to be coons when it comes down to getting married than a whole lot of sisters. A lot of sisters are coons. They've been, through affirmative action, given that two-to-one preference over black men, they came up with these things like project housing and other things to divide black men and black women. If your standard of living keeps going up as a black woman, you can't understand why a black man's working at UPS. And you're such a cunt, as white men say, that instead of saying at least he's working regularly, at least he's presentable, at least he's a good human being, you're mad that he's not the corporate head of, of FedEx or whatever without understanding how, what's the likelihood, even if he had the education, the training to be the head of FedEx. 
And who the hell are you for him to have to press the first stand play? And you tell me, woman, if what kind of man can impress a woman in the first place? There's always going to be someone with more money, bigger penis, bigger car, more air in the back, right, right tire, whatever it is. <laughs> Men can't buy women, not really, or win women without the consent of a woman being interested in the man. So, my brother... The black men that try to impress these sisters can't get them. And a black man that's not trying to get just a whole lot of money and material stuff isn't interesting to a whole lot of greedy, uh, mercenary, capitalistic sisters out here where everything is staying. I want the engagement ring. I want the marriage ring. I want the second anniversary ring. I want the fifth anniversary ring. I want the decade ring. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. Oh my God. I, mean, I want to eat at Piccadilly's twice a week. I don't feel like cooking. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. it's just everything is gimme, gimme, I got to a taker's. We have a lot of sisters that are just takers. They're not trying to give. And and actually, when they do give to someone, like, you know, the little crooked preacher with the grill teeth, it's because he's promising her something like heaven or a miracle, like she's going to be prosperous and in shape. <laughs> Try that without a treadmill. Mm. Yeah, I'm on that path. Okay. <laughs> And so a lot of the black men that I've seen that are activists have a hard time finding sisters that are activists because a lot of sisters, I'm sorry, they measure themselves against what white women have. And they're not going to live like white women, like Sue Ellen on South Fork, with their husband out there fighting for his people. Mm. This is why all over the country they're using black women in high places to stop the movement. I don't know if you're aware, but in the late 60s, when they were having all the uh, rebellions on campus, they began to study who are leading these movements to change the campuses. And of course, it was when it's black men. So they started making certain that black men didn't get in the school in the same numbers as females. Not that they ever did. In fact, let me, there's a woman, uh, her name is Never Done Morton. I have the book in storage. Do you know that black women have historically outnumbered black men in college? In many instances, as many as three and four to one. That's back in reconstruction times. Mm. Um, some of the biggest liars in history are black women that complain about not having educational opportunities. It sickens me to my guts to hear black women talk that garbage. African American men, who a lot of sisters I hate and talk a lot of shit about, that's based on feelings, nothing more than feelings. Alfred Morris, 1977. Top 10 hit if you don't know the song. Mm -hmm. um, black men historically tried to protect their girls from white men and from being in domestic service, put their daughters in schools and put their sons in the field, which meant that black girls got to be teachers. It was a way to keep them from getting raped and abused. Black men have historically educated and so have black mothers, their girls, and have not done the same for their boys. We have a culture that hates black men. And whereas I'm talking about the man-hating women, we have the brotherfucker black men mm -hmm. who see the world as a never-ending clash between black dicks. There's never enough pussy for two men. So I hate every other black male. I can't work with him. I'm mad. If he's gay, I hate him for being a faggot. If he likes women, he's going to take pussy from me. 
So there's no way you and me can get along because either I want to hump on you or I want to hump on somebody that you think is yours. This is how black men relate to each other. It's juvenile. It's satanic. It's Luciferian. It's carnal. It's shallow. There's an abundance of people to sleep with, but try telling that to the average black man. Hmm. That's why you get to a nightclub and the black men are fighting. There are 10 trillion women in there, five men, and all the black men are fighting. Hmm. Right? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, that's what you just so the, so the black man, the black man has never cut himself in into opportunity. And he does some things, he does more for females than he does for men. And by the way, the woman being spoiled, because black women are spoiled relative to black women everywhere else in the world. I've traveled. Trust me, it's true. You go to Africa and you show me a place where women outnumber men in school, like what you see in America, black women, eight, nine to one. That's unique to this country. And that's you. You can go to a church and these little fake ass nigga preachers say, oh, we're going to send a young woman to college. Damn. That's all you got in college is young women. <laughs> what about the young men going to college? It never comes up and there'll always be a little closet lesbian. And they're always talking about doing stuff for girls. You never hear them talk about doing nothing for boys. Never. And if you start talking about doing something for boys, you can get white lesbians and black lesbians and black feminists and other female coons to come together and attack it. Many years ago, they wanted to try to do something to counter the uh, black males not achieving academically in Detroit. And they're going to have a male school for, to try to get these black boys together. And the sorry ass black women got with the racist-ass white feminists and fought against the school, saying it would discriminate against the girls. Yet, you've got way more black women going to college than black men. But what does the hell truth have to do with it when you have black women that hate black men so much? They can only see their relationship to black men and their world as being victimized 100% of the time by black men. Hmm. This is how they see the world. In fact, if you let some of these little black feminists talk to you, it's black men that did segregation and, and credit redlining. And, and hmm. it's just black women who could get away from black men, life would be okay. Let's see how that works. <laughs> wow. Man, that's stupid. I, I knew this really dumb feminist named Wanda at Howard. And. She said that black women didn't have the opportunities. When I began to drop to her, the black men only began to get into college in substantive numbers to black women with the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. She says, what does education have to do with opportunity? Wow. Did you get that? Yeah. Do you see how the little brainwashed, stupid black woman will find any way to deny that black women have ever had anything extended to them. It's only black men that have everything. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you know the majority of the free people prior to 1865 were black women? Black free men were an absolute minority. Hmm. Meaning that it was easier for women to get their freedom because they're sleeping with white men. Okay, I ain't mad at them. But it's interesting. It's hard for black men to get there. I'm not even beefing about the woman being the majority, but it says that black women have had, black men and black women are more equal than white men and white women. Black women are very dishonest about this, and many of them pretend that uh, there's almost no equality between black men and black women. I've seen this in the elite schools where they just talk about the black patriarchy. I'm trying to think, where the hell was it? My principals were female. 
the head of my family, at least on one side, was female. I mean, I've always seen black women with power and education my whole life. This idea that black women didn't have anything. I, I learned this when I got to school with white people. Think about it. You name a field. Music, sports, science. Black women have often been leaders. Often. Often. Maybe not all the time, but often had a shot in the black community. Yes, there's, there's some stuff sexually reserved for men, sure. Mainly in the church. Mainly in the church. And who supports the church? Who finances the church? All the little grumbling people out there that are going to make nasty comments. Black women support the church. They finance it. So the greatest enemy of equality in the black community between the sexes is black women themselves. Although there are a whole lot of cool men that don't want to treat women right. I'm right there with you. I don't believe in this treating sisters of denying them their props. And so we got the mister from the color purple, which is a fictional story written by a lesbian who hates black men. Yes, she does. Unfortunately, we share birthdays, brotherhood. <laughs> and yeah, I call her phallus stalker. Little miserable, like, man-hating, castrating lesbian. Okay, yeah, I said that about her. I don't read her books. Um, but think about that. Isn't education one of the indicators of the chance to have opportunities, right? Um, so if black women are the majority and they get most of that, then when you make affirmative action, two to one preference where a woman's going to get two, two, twice as many chances as you, well, then who's going to get the jobs? And why are they giving it to black women? I'm not mad at black women getting it. Black women are less threatening than, than black men. I'm not mad at the black women for getting that, but be honest. You know, I remember when I finished my first grad degree and I was applying for a position, and I started to hear this thing. Well, we have two candidates for the job. You and a black woman. Whenever I heard that, I knew I wasn't going to get it. Mm. I never, never beat out a black woman. It always lost. Always. And I don't think I'm a sorry person. I mean, I was always inferior to every sister all the time. I was in class. I saw sisters that slept with the professors and mediocre females. They got in school because they got help. Um, there were mediocre males there too, but I saw mediocre females. And they're, they're the majority. There were a hell of a lot of mediocre sisters that I saw in school. I didn't say all, but I said many. Hmm. And I saw a lot of mediocre brothers. Are you understanding me? Yeah. And so there's one right now that's working for the uh, African American History Museum. No, she's working at the Afri African History Museum. I went to Howard with. She's having sex with a man in his 80s or 70s. They was a, but into his 80s. Yeah, he's really old. And he put this girl, who's a dummy, in the graduate program. And she got a PhD. She, she's dumber than a bag of rocks. But she's got a hot. I would never get. The same job she got it never be considered. It would never happen. They padded her resume. She didn't do anything. And I've watched this. And I've seen a whole lot of sisters using sex as their way up. I'm not knocking them for using that on their way up. But when I hear about all this backbone and strong sister this and that, a whole lot of folks did a lot of hoeing to get to where they are. White women do it, too. We never talk about that. And by the way, I would get a lot of comments that I sound jealous. No, I don't. Mm. I won't. I don't ever want to do that to get anywhere. And, and, and could have done that just, uh-uh. 
nah, I don't want to do that. I want it based on my merits, even though people don't believe in that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, you haven't seen that here? You haven't seen certain people do the Diana Ross? Mm-hmm. I like Diana Ross, but by no means was she the best singer in Motown. Right. But she know who to get with to get to the top. Amorosa, same thing. There are a lot of people that like Amorosa thinking, you know, okay, fine. I'm not saying she's that smart. But is that the kind of person that we aspire to be? Mm. Someone that that that's, that climbs with the genitalia to get somewhere? Where are you really climbing to? So, and I see little horse black men. They they you know what they tend to do is be with white men or white women. Okay, yes, it does too happen like Don Lemon. He has a, a Jewish husband. That's why he's on TV. If he were with the black woman, they would have fired him a long time ago. Mm. Yeah, I said it. I mean, it, I mean I'm not sorry. I got to tell the truth. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Tell sure. the truth, shame the cool. So are you <laughs> feeling me, brother? We just, we, we've got all of this wickedness in our community. We need God. We need to clean up. We need to be about being real men and black women. And we need to have our own stuff, not try to be in their system, but get our own and have some ethics in it. You know, um, I, I'll tell you something I, I don't like about black men in authority. I've noticed if you put black men in authority in many places, they think if they have a high position that they're owed sexual favors from all the women and sometimes the men too. Mm. And it's like, it's so pathological. Now, I've also seen sometimes you get a woman that gets a high position like one of the former presidents of the film Cookman College. Hi, Sheila. Is it true that everybody had to screw you to keep their job? I'm just asking. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a sincere question. Inquiring minds want to know, and my source says it's what had to be done. But then again, I don't know. You can call me. My number's posted. Um, are you feeling your brother hurt? So we can go on and on and on. But so where are you going to find the movement, woman, if all the women are told, uh, like that song, uh, Shake Your Money Maker, she has to use what she's got to get what she wants. Mm-hmm. But we've made prostitution and harlotry good and greed and materialism and women not being feminine or maternal or wife or life partner material, where are you going to find a black woman who has a father and that, that not only that she knows, but that she loves because a lot of sisters hate their father because their mother told them that their father's no good, but Ask yourself, why'd your mama cock her legs open and let him in there if she didn't like him? And so many black women are the collateral damage of their mother's gossiping. The mother being a bitch, yeah, I said it. Telling you a bunch of stuff about her and your dad that she should have told a woman her age or a psychiatrist or someone to put all that toxic garbage in the head of the girl when she's young. And yet a lot of times this woman will say all this stuff about the father, this, the man is that. And she stays with him, but their daughter is so angry with the father, they never find the man. Hmm. And oftentimes when they do find the man, it's a woman that beats their ass more than Ali and Stinks, duking it out. And they stay with it. Wow. So where do we find the movement women and where does the sister find the man who doesn't think that, you know, he's supposed to be a sexual 
Johnny Appleseed, Woody Woodpecker. And I blame again uh, our backbone sisters. Why do you sexualize these boys when they're three and four years old? Mm, He's going to be a hoe when he gets old. Have you ever seen that man encourage and tell this boy all the people he's going to screw? Mm-hmm. And what? why do you do that? Now, y'all women say all this stuff. Ooh, he's going to just break hearts. And so you get this reinforcement from the women. And then when you get about 10, or no, not 10, when you get about five, and you get told about cooch from your male peers, oh my God, so okay, having six and sex at six and seven, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. If being a dog has been engrafted into your childhood by people you trust, like your grandmother, you know, uh, there's a house several up the alley from mine. I'm so glad the family got kicked out. But the grandmother was telling the grandson that he was a faggot. Hmm. Over and over and over again. This kid's no more than four years old. It's not my child. I mean, what do you do? I call it child and family services. They're all molesting there, but a lot of our people are being destroyed by poor mothering. We talk about the absent father. What about the bastard that was there with the kids? What the hell was she doing? Hmm. I don't want to hear about the man. He's not there. He's in the hole and... and in Attica, someplace, says Sanditon in, in Kentucky, or Sands, whatever the hell you want to call it. These in the supermax. If you're there, what are you doing, black mother? Maybe you don't get to do a nail appointment or get your hair done. The most important is make certain that your children get somewhere. Who's raising all these confused boys and girls? A logical answer are black mothers. And at some point, we're going to have to say, black mothers, what the hell are you doing? You're so strong. You're a queen. You're the backbone. And this is the shit that's produced. Somebody's got an answer for this. Okay, we'll take your your comment is that all men are shit and unaccountable and they're never there. Okay, then if you're perfect and you're there and you've got it all together, how come the kids aren't turning out better? After all, you didn't need him. He was just a sperm dropper. Well, right? Yeah. I, at some point, yes, I, I, I don't care how mad I make you. At some point, if we're going to move forward, everybody's got to be held accountable, man and woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a problem as a people. I'll start with black men. Part of the whore and pimp stud thing is Never being honest with women because you may not get pussy for telling the truth. We learned that early. He ain't getting nothing because he's honest. So when we teach men to not have integrity so they can get some, and that's one of the most primal, powerful primal drives in men and women is sex. When a black man learns integrity is a guaranteed way to not get sex. The black men learn to lie and deny so they can get some. So the man never tells the truth because he's trying to get his broom dusted. Then a woman will never hear any real criticism from a man. And whereas the woman is told the man is a zero and he never does anything right, then she has to be perfect. Hmm. Are you understanding me? See, we have to leave that. I always say to the little feminists, and I love making those broads angry and make me sick. Or oh, macho dude, one of these. All that Tina said to you is toxic. The 
South Africans have this little saying, the women hold up one half the sky. I always say to them, well, if the whole sky is falling, does that mean that the woman dropped her half too? Then they get mad. We have to help one another. We have to be together. We have to be able to hear advice, critique. We have to be able to look and say, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> There's a sister I went to school with. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting her first name. No, I think her name was Tanya Jenner Ray. Mm. And I think her mother had five or seven children by seven different men. And she would always talk about men like they were no good. And my thing is, um, okay, let's say the men are no good. But at some point, when your mother had the third child by the third man, which child after the third child would you safely say allows us to call your mother a hoe? Hmm. I'll give you the first three, that each one, the man was no damn good, and he lied to her. But when we get to four, five, and six, and seven, and everybody's a dog, and she's not a hoe, she's just living for Jesus. Bullshit. Hmm. No, your mother was a hoe. You don't have to have all those kids by different men. No, you don't. And... Um, you get where I'm coming from? You know, we could talk about black men not paying child support, but we don't talk about the mothers who get child support not buying the proper food for the kids, right? We don't talk about her giving one man's money to another man, right? Mm -hmm. We don't talk about the woman not letting the man visit his children, even though he's paying the money he's supposed to, right? How come we don't have that discussion? How come we don't have a discussion of all the men whose marriages end because the women are gay and he's put out of his house by her girlfriend or she leaves for another woman? It happens. Black men, either they're punk, faggot type men who can never, they're so afraid I ain't gonna get any pussy if I tell the truth. So I'm just never gonna talk about anything so I could get my. Oh, I hate that about black men. Mm. I do. So when a black man has a woman leave him for another woman, they don't talk about it. But if a black man leaves a black woman for a man, you go hear about it. And I don't mind that happening, but the issue is, shouldn't it also be said when the woman leaves a man for a woman? Isn't that equality? You see, a lot of women don't want equality heard. They want the benefits of equality without being accountable. That's white and black women in America. Hmm. And uh, as long as black men accommodate that as being the way women are, which is bullshit, that's the way American women are. You can get your, you can get stoned and hurt in these other countries doing so. It's in Brazil, man, you catch your wife cheating. A man can kill a woman and get off. I don't want, I never want to see that happen in America. But I do want, if a woman's wrong, she's held accountable as an adult. If a man's wrong, he's held accountable as an adult. If a man rapes a woman, lock his ass or kill him. If a woman falsely accuses, throw that bitch in jail for 15 years. Hold everybody accountable equally. And our community has to begin to do this or we're doomed. And if we don't like boys dressing up like girls, in fact, one woman made a comment to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this for one second, then we're going to wind up. Look, my brother, I was on a thread, and I decided to go to war with some vicious, neo-minded sisters. 
um, who kept talking about all the black men being gay, and I'm thinking all black men are not gay. And they kept insisting that all the black men were gay. Oh, mm. God, okay. Yeah, I want to do this. Okay, we want to do it. That's just what, you know what? I've got a solution. I've got a solution to all, for, for all you women worried about a man being gay. The answer is polygyny. Not polygamy, polygyny. Mm-hmm. All you women need to find a straight man, put him on a schedule, so you know who's who's getting screwed on which days, and get a dude that just that keeps himself in shape, that drops the pipe, and that way you know that you deal with the man that just completely his civic duty is banging the booty, mm. and y'all share him because you know he's straight, and let the other ones die or whatever. It's just that way you'll know. You know they said no to that, right? Mm. They get no. I want to have my own mess. Now I says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying you can't trust black men, uh, and yet if you're the one that's straight, y'all can't agree amongst yourselves to make certain that you are with the straight man. And I just said, you know, I said, let's be honest. Y'all aren't straight. You broads aren't straight. Well, I am too straight. He says, no, you aren't. Because they start talking about transvestites. He says, we're going to talk about transvestites, okay? It's a fraction of black men that are transvestites. I says, but it's almost a majority of you women that are transvestites. I says, that's how you get that. It says, how many of you wear pants and hats and men's gloves and men's shoes and men's socks? And then draws. Well, way more of you wear men's stuff than men wear women's stuff. First of all, they'll make you shit in our size if we want to wear it. Excuse me. You guys go to church dressed like dudes. And, and men accept it. But the rare dude that's dressed up like a broad in the world's going to end. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why is there no rules and no standards for how women are supposed to act? How, you know, a woman can wear or not wear lipstick. She can have earrings, not have earrings. She can have her hair cut bald. bald. It could be long. Men can get it. You get, it's just almost every imaginable thing, the rule, there's no rule for you. And for men, if I wear pink or purple or yellow or pastel, I'm queer. Hmm. I'm wherever that this, 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 why there's so many rules that define the man, but so few rules that define what a woman is. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. So, and I just went after it. I said, so most of y'all are transvestites. That just like dudes, you wear men's stuff. And men accept it. They don't, they don't complain because you're a woman. And I said to this lady, she told me something, she said, you know what, sister? I know if you told me somebody's by that was with you, I says with that Rikers Island smile you got. <laughs> well, you, you want to have sex twice a year, and 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 you wonder what he's doing. Shoot, I, I mean I know someone like this. They screw once a year, and they're with a the man. Hmm. So what supposed to do? And then if he cheats, he's a whole, you know, if, if he puts up with her not screwing, he's weak. This, right? Mm. Folks, account, when, when are folks going to start dealing with people, the games that being run? So I just said, you know what? Polygyny would work. I said, you, you'd have to share the income. You'd know where the man was. The kids would have a dad, all the stuff. Are you feeling me? Mm-hmm. And, and they said no to that. They said no to that. And my thing is, so well then, uh, in fact, they got mad and they went to one dude and told him he had to put me off of the uh, the page because they didn't want to debate. Because in reality, um, I've been in other countries when men, when women are talking and a man from another culture walks up, the woman gets silent. 
in black America, when men are talking, a woman walks up, black men get silent. It's just the opposite of what men do in other cultures. And black women are spoiled by the men being castrated. A real woman wouldn't want a castrated black man. A real woman wouldn't want a weak black man. A real black woman would want her man to be strong. You know, the difference is, is I looked at it, white women voted for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Even though he's a, a sexist ass man, because they like white men being strong. Black women say they want black men to be intelligent, sensitive, and strong, the essence man. But do you really see that, Ron Hurd? I had a student that reached out to me a couple of days. I think his, lot, his name is Lon Ray. I showed him he's like an African-American Nigerian uh, uh, boy, brother. I ran into him a couple of years ago. I was singing at this uh, coffee place. And I looked at him and I knew since your girlfriend's from another country, isn't she? And she's a good looking, gorgeous woman. Mm -hmm. And I said, Yeah, I was I thanked her for going out. He's a smart guy, manly, good looking, brilliant brother, but when he was at Bowie State, his sisters wouldn't even look. I saw black I seen this. Good guys, nice look that couldn't even get a hearing. But the guy that's on weed, the guy that's like a, a jackass, the dysfunctional dude, he's punching women in the jaw <laughs> and got them women just crowding them like flies on doo-doo. And uh, I asked sisters about this. Why did the black men that are dysfunctional get all the women and the black men that seem to be the most likely that are going to be reliable, magical dudes, they're lost in the shuffle. I don't get an honest answer, but I'll tell you what it is. And it's going to sound crude. No good dudes fuck better. Mm. That's what it is. The same way dudes like trifling women because they think a woman with tight clothes on, with tattoos and all that screws better than a little church girl who dresses modestly. Okay. And uh, this sister tried to tell me something. Many years ago, and I came up with my term, I said to her, how can you sisters pick such sorry-ass brothers to get with? And because I said, you know what? I've seen white women, they get the pick of the litter of black men. Asian women, all these women know how to pick black men well-educated. How come you can't find them? I says, even the gays can find black men with that are educated. How come you, how do, why don't you know your own black man? And she said, um, well, it's kind of hard to really know what's going on um, when you're picking black men. She says, it's hard to predict. I said, it's not hard to predict. It's because you're predicting. Pre, before, dick. You're trying to figure out what kind of dick you're going to get mm -hmm. before you figure out what kind of man you're talking to. Mm. It's prediction is your damn problem. And uh, they stopped speaking to me, and I didn't mind because I don't like stupid people. <laughs> Pre prediction. Stop trying to figure the dick out before you know who the man is. And it's the same thing for men who are more etched in the woman's ass than her mind. Find out. If she hates her dad, she's going to hate you too. If she loves her dad, she's going to be nice to you. Um, wow. Does he have a history of violence? If he has six women with six children, um, you're going to be involved with the other people. He screwed, sister. Why not try a dude who hasn't been around the block as much? Mm. Maybe he can't screw as good as the person that's been screwing since he's six years old. But maybe with some on-the-job training, he can get there. You know, a lot of sisters like playing mystery games about sex. No, get some books. Do some tutorials. Tell them how to hit the G-spot. Don't play mystery games like, well, if you were a real man, you would know how to. Why does he have to know all that? Why does he have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of sex uh, before he gets with you? 
do you realize he'd have to have screwed and experienced a whole lot of women before he gets to you? And if he has that kind of flavor and taste for women, how's he going to be faithful? If he's used to like being a jack roller, hitting everything. He's like an autofocus camera <laughs> on a project building, <laughs> but he covers the area. You dumbass, you better get a man that can be intimate with you. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying a lot of, I mean, and, and the brothers, I don't know what it is about people like Kanye where they want to screw a woman. It's almost like they want their sperm to like arm wrestle with the other dude's sperm and the you know, loved ones wins out. And it's nasty. Mm. If you put a woman that all the other men have been with, it's almost like you're screwing the guys she was with. That you're going to be dealing with them too. Um, yeah, I said it like that. It's it's crude, but you are. I think you went in the sm smooth thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Though. Anyway, there's plenty to play with, man. There's plenty to play with. I, this is going to have them set off for a couple of days. Yeah, it will be a lot of people. I already know. I can hear the, the. I can just see the comment section now, but it's something that need to be talked about because. I mean, there is a, a disconnect. There is a problem. I know uh, just talking to people where I'm at, uh, dealing with certain types of women and certain types of mindsets and stuff among our people is that, uh, you know, it's just like, I don't know, man. It's just like, I know too many single women that are professional women. They're in their uh, early or mid 40s. They've never been married. They don't have any children. And they keep on saying, well, they can't find no man. Or I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Right. I, I guess a lot of us guys, you know, if you become the dominator, if you like always having an issue in your relationships, like you can't keep a man or you can't be with nobody, you got to start looking yourself in the mirror and seeing what's going on. Uh, is it always the man fault? Or is it all, even if you're a man, is it always the woman fault uh, for you being by yourself or not having success? And it's not. I'm trying to say everybody held accountable. Mm -hmm. but I mean, the women are going to only hear the criticism on the female side. They won't hear the criticism of the male. This is a denial of defense because if I'm saying everyone must be accountable, they don't like that because they don't want to be accountable. Yeah. That, they, now put that out there. That's going to make people mad. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny how you, what you said about the accountability part. Anytime a black person goes along and say some good points, and then you say, we got to be accountable for ourselves, and black folks get mad and get emotional. We don't want to be responsible for our, ourselves. We want to be slaves. We want to be, you know, we don't want to have no type of, it's like what somebody talk about when a person gets killed by the police, and then you, and then we protest, we angry then, we talk about black folks killing other black people. I'm not saying black or black crime, that's somehow things happen in our neighborhoods and whatnot. And then we point that out or somebody points that out, then you become a bad person pointing it out. Like, you yeah, know. But, well, we, we can't live for them. So I, today I just went to war on uh, feminism uh, in the community. I know I said something about Alice Walk. I know that's the right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but me. You got a right to say, I think you, know, you you provide a lot of food for thought, not to show it every time you open your mouth. Like I said, I meet people out in the streets or whatever, and they just really enjoy your uh, commentary and, and analysis on the issues because they're not getting this from a so-called fake news source. I mean, we don't really have, like you talk about the lack of a true uh, black media presence concerning certain topics and stuff and things we need to be talking about instead of all this other stuff like this very gossipy or it's very entertainment oriented. You know, we need well, to start we, getting this stuff yeah. you're talking about. We can do gossip, but we have to put something in there. Because, I, man, I know I said something. You, the sisters are going to howl tonight. They're going to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Halloween, right? <laughs> you should put it out for Halloween. Yeah, no, yeah definitely. I mean, today. So I'm definitely going to put that out there. It's trick or treat. <laughs> they or treat be very or retreated. <laughs> They could be very, very angry. I know that thing. I said, so how many babies do you have to have by different men before you become a hoe? Before we call you a hoe? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, yes, you're in Jasper Williams territory now. 
<laughs> oh, well, I don't care. I mean, I like Jasper Williams. That thing was so good. Do you know Jasper Williams? I don't know, but my, my mom used to go to his brother's church in Memphis. He got an A.R. Williams, got a church. He's the one with the Statue of Liberation through Christ on the front lawn, and they caused a lot of controversy. So this yeah. family is known for controversy, but they are, you know, well-respected, I guess, preaching family. And he was awesome, man. Um, that I love the way he made he made everybody mad. It was so good. I mean, um, he he did that last few minutes where he talked about respect. That was hilarious. Mm. And I know that there are people still angry about the film. It was the best thing in there. Mm-hmm. I, I can do it right there. The gate <laughs> when he did that man, and he made um, he made gay uh, like a four, no, a, a six syllable word. That was hilarious, man. That's <laughs> uh, that's like wow. But um, we need to really think about about that and. You should reach out. I'm going to send you a number for. The beauty is you have lots of content, man. There's mm. no reason that this can't be made into. That one can't have an entertainment complex. Mm-hmm. Are you feeling? There's no reason. No, you can't have an entertainment complex right now, mm-hmm. and that, and you know, have people buy into it. You know, um, we've got to have these things. If we don't get them, um, we're dead. And people like Tariq Nasheed, they can do Haiti, and they can do Hidden Colors. But they don't do Mississippi right now. This bothers me. I don't mind knowing history from six, seven thousand years ago. But what about speaking to today? Mm-hmm. I mean, have, have you ever noticed the stuff for um, the hidden colors? All of them are talking about what used to happen. What about what's happening right now? So, anyway, let me get off of here. It's almost 7 o'clock. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, you're a marathon, man. I just always must respect Dr. Short. You know, I want to talk to you. I know you're going to have a lot to say. And uh, you've been consistent. And, you know, you've been animate about, you know, things we need to know about. But uh, I guess it's like, you know, we need to start supporting people like you as well. And you got a documentary out, correct? That could be viewed. Yeah, it's it's something that has to. It's got to get a push. Uh, we've got to go after Black Lives Matter. They have to be punished. Um. See. They've learned that black men don't hold black women accountable and our enemies running black women against black men. And so they can do it with Black Lives Matter. In D.C., we have a lesbian there that's hurting us. You keep getting hit and nobody will say anything about these sisters. It, it's not fair. It's not fair to our survival. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying give brothers the pass. That's not what I'm saying. Trust me, that's what folks are going to post up there. But I'm not. I don't call black men out. You know, say, and that, that's so funny. Uh, he, he doesn't hold black women. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't hold black women accountable. <laughs> I mean, he gets a whole black man accountable. He, he, he only attacks black women. I guess it's just for gay folks. Now say he never criticizes straight people. Do you hear, did you hear me go, go ahead and straight people? Yes, I do. 
I'm talking about all of this. They don't want, if you are looking at all of it, it makes them mad because you're saying something they don't want to hear. I'm going to send you Bryant Moore's number. This brother's a genius, man. I mean, he knows how to find grants and shit. Um, we can have a media thing, and I think we can have one in several cities. One in D.C., D.C., Baltimore, Atlanta, with the capacity to do satellites and other places, and, of course, Memphis. Memphis and Chicago. If we just had like a parallelogram between D.C., Atlanta, Memphis, Chicago, and maybe some place in the middle, like uh, Philly, I don't know about Philly, maybe, we would be able to really turn this thing around because I see different people trying to get these media groups but they don't have there's so many black folks doing social media until it's it's glutted and uh, things like Facebook and Twitter are doing everything they can to prevent people from doing educating one another anyway I'm going to let you go you have a good morning. Too bad, so thank you so much for all you do. In the words of Duke Elton, we love you madly. Keep on producing and pushing. All right. See you, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. You do, too. All right. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.